like to call this meeting of the Arlington County Board of Commissioners to order and ask Mr. Steve Johnson to appeal to the invocation. Let's pray, please. Father, once again, we come to you and asking for wisdom and insight, and we have a brief agenda tonight, but that doesn't mean that the items on here are not worthy of our careful consideration. I pray, Father, that you will enlighten our minds, that we'll make the right decision. And, Father, I just pray that everything we do, say, or even think here tonight will honor your Son, the Lord Jesus, and it will bless the folks of this county, for it's in Christ's name we ask it. Amen. Amen. In addition to that, I'd like to ask everyone to please remember the Harry Tumas family and what they're going through this week. Uh, this, this terrible thing happened. And, uh, of course, Harry is a member of our planning board. Um, now, if you please stand for Pledge of Allegiance to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Maspin, are any adjustments to the agenda? Uh, no adjustments, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any commissioner have any adjustments? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. Is there a motion we accept the ag agenda as presented? So moved. Motion has been made that we accept the agenda as presented. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Public hearing is a rezoning case number 0910-1, applicant Todd Tourette for the China Grove Restaurant Group. Request to be rezoned 4.03 acres located at 11, uh, 111 River Highway, Mooresville, North Carolina, from Neighborhood Business Conditional Use District to Neighborhood Business Conditional District. Mr. Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Board of Commissioners. <clears throat> uh, this is a four, just over a four-acre tract. It's located on Highway 150 at the corner of River Park uh, Road, um, which goes into a, um, a, a business park uh, between McCrary and Highway 150. Uh, this is a case that's come up before uh, this board uh, back in 2002. Uh, we rezoned it back in 2002 to NBCUD. This was our old conditional use district zoning. And as part of that rezoning, we had a number of conditions on the request. And what the applicant is looking to do is change some of those conditions and allow a use that was prohibited uh, in, in many ways, um, but, but not expressly, uh, and try and clean up the situation, basically. The conditions that we have attached to this request, basically those that the applicant has, some, some of which he has volunteered and some that we have kept from the old case, uh, are as follows. Uh, there will be no metal facades on any sides of the building. Brick, stone, split face block, and stucco will be the primary um, materials for the, for the facade of the building. Access to the property will remain as shown on, rezoning site, on the rezoning site plan even if it's subdivided in the, in the future. And I'll get to that, that plan in just a minute. Uh, this, as you can see from the, from the zoning map, this parcel is surrounded by either off, residential office, shopping center, general business, generally a commercial area designated as commercial corridor in our 2030 plan. The site plan that we have shows that, this is Highway 150, shows that there will be no entrance coming off of Highway 150, that the only entrance will be coming off River Park Road, which is, again, a side street. This is not even a state, main, a state road. This is uh, a, a private road at this point. They're going to bring the traffic in from River Park to the back side of the property to access what could be three potential businesses. And from an access management standpoint, that is probably one of the better ways to deal with the traffic on Highway 150 and something we were trying to achieve 
uh, back in 2002 when we went through this the first time. The proposed uses would be in the phase one, a three bay automated car wash. This is not something that you would have attendance and uh, actually not something that you would even have people coming out and washing their own car manually. And I think the applicant can give you a little more details on that. The other uses would be commercial retail or commercial office, but basi basically something commercial in nature that would be allowable under the neighborhood business designation, which is our least intrusive of all of our, our business designations. Uh, this parcel is in the watershed, uh, being down on Highway 150 and relatively close to the lake. They were given 82,764 square feet of coverage several years ago through a high density option that was approved by the commissioners for the entire River Park area. Each of the parcels in River Park um, several years ago were given a specific square footage that they can cover, which applies to this parcel as well. I'll go through several, uh, several photos of the property. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with Highway 150. This is at the corner of, um, of River Park Road. Right now, the property is vacant, been graded off, and that's, that's the only work that I'm aware of that's taken place. Uh, these are several apartment buildings that are located on the back side, on the south side of this property. Uh, been there for, I would estimate, 10 years, eight to 10 years. This is River Park Road. Um, more, there's some office development and some lighter industrial types of uses, warehousing, things of that nature in the backside of River Park. This is looking west out towards the lake. And again, this is the, this is the piece of property actually across River Park. It's graded off, owned by uh, Greg Biffle, if I'm not mistaken. Um, no development plans on it, but definitely looks like it is ready to be developed. Um, and that's actually the sign for lease. And this is looking across 150. Um, again, more commercial uses. And finally, the People's Bank that is in the town of Mooresville. This was annexed several years ago and built under the town's standards. So there's water and sewer, to my knowledge, out to that piece. Uh, the applicant is not looking to utilize Mooresville utilities. Therefore, they're looking to go through with the entire development process under Iredell County. Based on the fact that they meet our 2030 plan, uh, they've, in my opinion, they're handling the traffic very well and their site plan is something that uh, I wish we saw more of. Uh, we are recommending in favor of this and the planning board recommended unanimously also. And I'd be glad to answer any questions that you have. Any questions, Ms. Smith? Along that back side where those apartments are, or, or houses, what type of uh, barrier do they plan to put there? Well, the, we would require that a, uh, a vegetative buffer be put in um, that would eventually get up to 10 feet in height uh, there is a separation that would be required as well because it is a residential use. You can see from the site plan that they are proposing more of a more of a tree line than uh, than what we're requiring. But we're you know we're we're definitely going to require some vegetation. Uh, the issue with that backside is you know in general the second story of the second stories of the apartment you're not going to be able to do too much that's going to uh, totally block their view uh, in my opinion you're going to have to wait many years if trees are planted for them to get high enough to actually do that because if you're looking <coughs> from this area out you know you're still going to see something um, but because this is a transitional corridor and because that uh, that property has always been designated you know, generally for some sort of commercial use, uh, it, it's one of those factors that's, that's going to happen and we'll try and mitigate it how we can. So right now, the only business going in will be the car wash, correct? The, that's the first phase and the other two will come eventually, but I think that's the first phase and I'll, and I'll let the applicant 
talk a little bit more about that. He can give you some specifics. Just a minute, if you mentioned about the utility, what kind of a situation is that? Well, and again, this is one I'll, I'll defer, but right now this is going to be on, um, well, I'll, I'll let him go into details about okay. it, but it will not utilize water and sewer from the town of Mooresville at this point. Thank you. You want to speak? Good evening. My name is Todd Surratt, um, and I'm the gentleman that has plans to develop the property. Um, to answer a couple of your questions with respect to, to future businesses that I would see there, my goal would be, even though I have no crystal ball and I can't tell you exactly what might go there, um, my goal would be uh, office, uh, banking, um, you know, something of that nature uh, would be developed on the balance of the property. Um, as far as the car wash goes, uh, I will be using uh, the water service from Aqua, which services the River Park area. However, one thing that, um, that I'll be doing at this car wash is I'll be recycling 100% of my water, so I will not have a, a sewer need. Um, it's a, a, a relatively new system where I'm able to uh, recycle, in essence, 100% of my water. There'll be a little bit of water usage, but it'll be continually, you know, cycle back through the, the car wash system. So there will not be any sewer discharge at all, uh, if that answers your question there. All part of this, you know, going green and being environmentally friendly and so... be happy to answer any other questions any questions thank you thank you I call this meeting to be in the uh, public hearing on this rezoning case number 091-1 anyone wishing to speak for or against this this uh, rezoning case you have your opportunity to speak at this time Hearing none, I declare this uh, public hearing closed, and I'll entertain a motion. Do you have a motion to accept recommendation? There is a motion to accept the rezoning. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries 5-0. Thank you. Second item, consideration of a financed installment agreement for Mitchell Community College, Morrisville Campus Building Project, and the Union Grove Elementary School Project. Ms. Blumenstein. Good evening. I just wanted to talk to you for a minute about the proposed financing for Mitchell Community College. This is to construct and equip 17 general classrooms and a multi-use classroom at the Morrisville campus. We've talked about this since about December of last year and the potential of needing to borrow approximately $2,785,000 plus closing costs for this project. Other, other financing sources have been identified, including about $1.4 million remaining from the 2006 general obligation bond, $900,000 from the North Carolina Community College bond, there's funds in our fund balance as well as the college's fund balance and $300,000 in grants that they've received, um, 250 from Lowe's Corporation and I believe 50,000 from Randy Marion for this classroom building. At the last board meeting, we determined it would be in the best interest of the county to combine this with an installment financing agreement for Union Grove Elementary School. Those requests for proposals have been sent to the banks and they're due back tomorrow. So I'll be coming to you um, if, if you adopt the financing. 
uh, resolution tonight. Tomorrow I will submit the application to the Local Government Commission to get on the agenda, and I'll continue to feed um, documentation to them between now and the end of the month uh, to proceed with this financing. Mitchell College, we do have plenty of funds um, identified in the current year revenue stream and future revenue streams to cover this debt service that will not require a tax increase or um, any other change in the funding method. Okay. Any questions, Ms. Blumenstein? Ms. Blumenstein, I assume you're going to get proposals from several financial institutions and then you're going to come back with a recommendation of who we, who we should go with? Is yes, sir, I will. Um, they are due in tomorrow, and at your meeting on the 17th, I'll be uh, making a recommendation. If you would like for me to, I'll be glad to send um, out the results of the tabulation after they're received. I sent it to five institutions, RBC, First Citizens, Wachovia, Wells Fargo, slash Wells Fargo, uh, Bank of America, and let's see. First institution. Anyway, five. <laughs> what time frame? And I've already had two say decline to the, they would not be offering a proposal. RBC Bank and Wachovia. Okay. What time frame will you have? <clears throat> uh, you think you? It'll take to get this back. Uh, they're due back to me tomorrow. I sent them out um, two weeks Good. ago when the board authorized um, for me to go ahead and move ahead with. Union Grove to receive financing proposals, and we can save closing costs to do this as one deal instead of multiple deals. We should know everything by Friday then, right? Yes, sir. If you'd like to know what the bids are, I'll be glad to send that tabulation out, and then I'll come to you on the 17th, probably with the first with a recommendation as well as the first set of financing documents. We hope to have this closed by the third week of December. It'll be heard by the Local Government Commission on December 1st. Okay. Thank you. I now declare this meeting to be in a public hearing for consideration of a finance installment agreement for Mitchell Community College's Mooresville Campus Building Project and Union Grove Elementary School Project. Is anyone here who wishes to speak either for or against? These projects. Hearing none, I declare this public hearing closed, and, and I will now entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I make the motion to adopt the resolution making certain findings relating to the financing of certain community college facilities and certain school facilities pursuant to an installment financing agreement and authorizing the Director of Finance to file application for approval thereof by the Local Government Commission. Okay. We've heard the motion. There's any discussion? No discussion. All in favor of this motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, <coughs> like sign. Motion carries 5-0. Mr. Mashman, would you do the administrative matter, please? Okay, the first item under administrative matters is a request for approval of budget amendment number 26 pertaining to the Mooresville graded schools. Ms. Blumenstein will make that presentation. Thank you. In the current year's budget, we had budgeted $548,000 lottery pro proceeds to assist in the debt service payments for Mooresville graded schools. This is debt that the county has issued on their behalf. We were notified in August that the state is going to take two-thirds of our beer and wine tax proceeds next May, of which part of that was appropriated this year to Mooresville and Iredell Statesville. So we want to substitute that beer and wine tax with lottery proceeds. In addition, Mooresville has requested $75,000 to help with some roofing repairs that they did not anticipate. Now keep in mind this year's general fund budget appropriation um, for Mooresville only covered their debt service. There were no additional funds for ongoing capital, and that's why they're requesting their 75000 for roof and repairs. Okay. Ms. Hass could not be here tonight. She's out of town. Okay. Any questions? Go ahead. 
The um, you, you said that the that the state of North Carolina um, is uh, is they're reducing by two thirds or reducing by one third. They're take, they're reducing by two thirds. They're, okay, and will that will we get that money back at a later time? No. Okay, just want everybody to be aware that the that the Republican Board of County Commissioners is not cutting the education allotment to the school system. It's a Democratic General Assembly, a Democratic State Senate, and a Democratic Governor that did this. Okay, so whenever people say that Republicans are against education, people just need to remember this, what, what happened. Okay. Thank you. We get, we get blamed. We might as well lay the blame where it, where it belongs. Well said, Ken. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I offer a motion we approve this uh, request. Motion to approve this budget amendment. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Oppose, like, sign. Thank you. Motion carries 5-0. The next item is a request of approval of the CVS Caremark Minute Clinic as an accepted in-network provider for the county health plan through the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. Our acting HR Director, Cynthia Eads, will make that presentation. Good evening. Um, the first item I have on the agenda for your consideration is the addition of CVS Minute Clinics to our in-network group of providers under the county health plan. If you approve this, the Minute Clinics would be available for our covered members beginning January 1st of 2010. The addition of the Minute Clinics as an in-network provider would provide two types of savings in the county. The first type of savings would be for the health plan itself. Um, the average cost savings per visit to a minute clinic can range anywhere on the low end from $46 per visit on the upper end to about $460 per visit to the minute clinic as opposed to a visit to an alternative um, facility such as an emergency room, an urgent care center, or even your uh, personal family care physician. The second uh, savings that could be achieved would be for the covered members themselves. There is no copay for a visit to the Minute Clinic. Uh, there is no copay um, that is designed to increase the utilization of the Minute Clinics as opposed to utilization of the more expensive alternatives that I mentioned, emergency room, urgent care, or personal care physician visit. Um, this is very similar to what we do with our prescription drug care coverage. The copay for generics is lower than the copay for a name brand drug. This then drives up the use of the less expensive generic prescriptions and drives down the use of the more expensive name brand prescriptions, which results in a savings for the county health plan and helps contain the cost of the prescription drug care program. So the, um, the elimination of the copay for the minute care clinics is designed to do the same thing. There's more information in your packet from, um, there's a letter from the Association of County Commissioners that gives a little bit more detail about the Minute Clinics. I'll be happy to uh, go into more detail. I will just point out that they really are designed to treat non-emergency health issues, anything from fever, strep throat, cough, um, the flu, uh, sprain, acne, those, those sorts of issues. They are staffed by physician assistants or a family nurse practitioner. Um, no appointment is necessary for a visit. You just walk in, and I went to the um, clinic on, um, it's on River Highway in Mooresville. I went there Saturday just to sort of look around, and you walk in, and it's immediately to your right. There's a great big sign that says CVS Minute Clinic. Um, there's no receptionist. There's a group of about six or seven chairs you sit in. There's a computer kiosk. You go in and type your name um, to get yourself registered, and while I was there, there were looked like three patients waiting, and while I was sort of watching what was going on, um, a physician's assistant or a nurse practitioner came out with one person and called the name of the next person, and, and they went back in. But that's sort of how it works. The Minute Clinics are open, um, mirrors about what the CVS store would be open. They're open Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 7.30. On Saturday, it would be open from, I think it's 9 to 5.30, and on Sunday, 10 to 5.30. So it, it allows an employee a little bit more options on um, if you need, especially if you have a sick child or something like that and you need a quick trip to a, 
uh, office, you, you have another option besides your emergency room or your urgent care or even trying to get a doctor's appointment during, during working days. And I'll be happy to um, answer any questions. Now, yes, is Mooresville the only location? It is. In Iredale County, it's the only location. Do they plan to add more locations? I did call the association, and at this time, they really do not have any plans to add any more clinics in the near future. They have the one in Iredale County. Uh, they have a couple. The closest next one would be in Huntersville. There's something in Forsyth County, but they are designed to be around um, sort of the metropolitan areas, Charlotte, Durham, Greensboro, um, Raleigh, and, and Forsyth County. So the only one we have is on that river highway, the CVS there, and that's the only one that they plan to have. Now, that's not to say that you know, a year from now, if that facility is overwhelmed with, um, with patients trying to access it, that they wouldn't look to broaden that. But right now, there's not any plans to do that. Other questions? Is there a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Motion's been made. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries 5 0. Thank you, Ms. Eves. The next item is a request for approval of agreement with the Mountain State University to provide a 20% tuition reduction for county employees in exchange for twice yearly announcements in the County Circle newsletter, participation in the county's annual wellness fair, and a lunch and learn information session. Um, Ms. Siege will also make that presentation. The next item I have is, as Mr. Mashburn said, a, for you to consider an agreement between Iredale County and Mountain State University. Mountain State University is based in Beckley, West Virginia. They have um, had a facility at the Hickory Metro Higher Educational Center for um, probably about the last two years. They have just recently opened a satellite campus in Mooresville, North Carolina. You may actually have seen that. It's located off of exit 33. If you're going off of that exit heading down towards Charlotte. If you look up to your right, there's a glass building about six stories tall, blue glass, and it says Mountain State University, but that's their Mooresville campus. Um, what they would like to do is to uh, go and enter an agreement with Iredale County, and what they would do, their end of the bargain would be to provide any employee of ours that wanted to um, either pursue their four-year degree or their master's degree through Mountain State University, the employee could receive a 20% tuition discount. In exchange, Iredale County would allow Mountain State University two times a year to um, post an announcement in our county circle newsletter about the programs that they offer. We would allow them to have a table at our annual wellness fair, which is held one time a year, so that they could distribute some of their materials. Um, we would allow them to place a poster on a bulletin board that talked about their programs that they offered, and then we would allow them to sponsor one time a year a lunch and learn session where an employee would come during their lunch hour and learn more in more detail about the programs that the um, university offers. The two sorts of programs that would be available for our employees, as I mentioned, would be they offer a master's degree in strategic leadership. That program takes about 18 months to finish, and before you can be enrolled in it, you do have to already have a four-year degree. They also offer a... Um, a BS degree in organizational leadership. That again takes about 18 months to finish. The um, employee does have to have 40 hours of prior college transfer credit that they could transfer to Mountain State University, and they have to have two years of work experience. The average cost of tuition for either one of these programs is about $12,000 for the entire program, so the 20% discount would entitle the employee to save about $2,400 um, for the whole, whole of the program. I have a list of, if, you know, if you're interested of other places that have, in our area, that have signed um, or entered into an agreement with Mountain State, the town of Morrisville's done that, Lake Norman Regional Medical Center is, Carolina Medical Center has, and then there's a good number, City of Hickory, Catawba County, Caldwell County, um, City of Newton, several places closer to the Hickory Metro Education Center have also entered into an agreement with Mountain State University. You. If you've got other questions, these, I'll be happy to answer is them. Is this an accredited institution? Yes, sir, it is. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, Chair Ann Turner's a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make the motion that we approve the agreement between the county and Mountain State University. Okay, the motion's been made. Any other comments? Any questions? Discussion? 
Here, none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carries, 5-0. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And the last item is a uh, request to approve the October 20th, 2009 minutes. Is there a motion we approve the minutes? So moved. Motion's been made. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Announcements of vacancies occurring on boards and commissions. Animal Grievance Committee, one announcement. Nursing Home Advisory Board, one announcement. Appointments to boards and commissions. Crossroads Behavioral Health Care, three appointments. I have, um, I'll be able to make that, uh, those nominations that are probably our next meeting. I've got, um, one that I'm still waiting on a response to. So we should, we don't really have to have it before December anyway. So you're just going to do all three at one time? Yeah. I'll, I'll try to have it all next time. Sure. Um, unfinished business. New business. County manager's report. Uh, Mr. Chairman, other than just a reminder about the um, session that is scheduled for 8 o'clock Friday morning here at the um, Southwind Conference Room, uh, right now we, with the items that are on the uh, agenda, which basically include budget overviews, um, the um, and revenue projections, the um, UDO uh, that uh, Mr. Smith will be making a presentation on that. Um, also, we do have an item being brought forward by the Recreation Advisory uh, Commission concerning a donation, a possible donation to the county uh, of uh, a, some land and facility. And uh, uh, Mr. Woody will be making that presentation. Um, and of course, there are it's it's board's meeting, so there may be other items. Certainly, one of the things that we hope to gather from this is, as we proceed into the remaining portion of this year, and uh, as we have a better handle on what the um, financial uh, position of the or condition of the county is, that uh, you give us some guidance uh, if there is a need to uh, start looking for. Uh, changes or reductions uh, either this year or as we start planning for next year uh, we're, what your priorities on those would be so uh, again we anticipate no more than a, a half day uh, we should be through by noon time thank you we will have some breakfast yes sir. Uh, it, it will not be a uh, buffet uh, it'll probably be a bag i don't know we'll see but we have chocolate milk. Chocolate <laughs> milk. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Is there a motion we adjourn? So moved, Mr. Chairman. All in favor, stand to your feet. I have a request. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that's unanimous.